Fran Brown with Tech for Senior. If you've bought a Apple Watch, a Samsung Galaxy Watch 4, or a Fitbit Sense in the last few months, you've probably noticed there's an ECG app on there. Now, what does that all mean? Well, as a physician, let me explain how this works. If you think this is going to monitor your heart, diagnose you when you're having chest pain and a heart attack, get an ambulance there on time, get you to the hospital and save your life, well, maybe you better watch this video, all right? Let me explain a few things. Now, you know the old like and subscribe thing. If you like this video, please click the like. And if you subscribe, it really helps us keep making videos like that. Now, will my watch save me? Will it get the ambulance there? What is this ECG app on your watch? Well, let me explain this for you. Now, the goal of this presentation is to teach you three things that you need to know. I'm going to explain how the ECG app works on your smartwatch. Then we're going to talk about how your smartwatch actually can save your life. And also at the end, I'm going to give you a tip on a product that you can use that isn't even a smartwatch that can help save your life. Let's look at this slide. It was taken from my very popular presentation called Saving Your Life with Wearable Technology. I'll leave a link in the description below. If you look at the top right hand picture on your screen, you're going to see a very apprehensive man with one foot in both arms in buckets of water hooked up to an, some sort of electronic machine. Well, this was the first ECG machine in 1860. So very early on in medical history, we knew that the electrical activity of a heart is important in diagnosing problems. And over the years, we have developed a machine called an ECG, an electrocardiogram, which uh, is all those little stickies, you know, they put on your chest and, and then they push a button and it prints out this piece of paper like you'll see on the bottom left corner. This is called an electrocardiogram. So what? What's the importance of this? Well, it gives us a lot of information about your heart. It tells us about the past. It tells us if you've had a heart attack in the past, if you've had hypertension, all sorts of information on the history of your heart. It can tell us the present. If you're having chest pain in the emergency department and we want to know if you're having an acute heart attack, it helps us make that diagnosis. We can also look into the future of your heart and tell how well your heart is going to do. All these things, past, present, and future, we can tell by doing this electrocardiogram. So in this picture, you'll see on the left-hand side, a 12-lead ECG done by a physician in the hospital. And you'll, this gives us the past, present, and future that we just discussed. On the right-hand side, you'll see an iPhone connected to an Apple Watch. This also gives us an ECG. But the ECG feature on the Apple Watch, the Fitbit Sense, and the Galaxy Watch 4 only does one thing. It does not give us all that information that a hospital ECG does. Let me explain the information it gives you. If you're over the age of 60, the chances of getting atrial fibrillation go up exponentially each year. So if you look at the graph, you'll see almost a straight line as, as, as you get older. Now, atrial fibrillation is a common condition and one that is so important to diagnose. Atrial fibrillation has many complications, such as blood clot, heart failure, but the most important one is it is a major cause of stroke. So we want to diagnose this early and get you treatment. This is the sole purpose of the ECG app on your smartwatch. The important thing for you to understand is that the ECG app does not record your heart on an ongoing basis. You need to have some palpitations, feel a bit unwell, or just want to check your heart, so you need to open the app up and initiate it. It doesn't do this automatically if you're having problems. 
Once you open the app up and turn it on, then you'll need to touch the crown of your watch. Now all three watches, you have to touch them, but it could be in a different location. So you'll have to read the instruction manual on that. But you need to do an extra physical gesture by touching the crown or the side of the watch to complete the electrical circuit to do the ECG. Once this occurs, you'll have an ECG done in about 20 seconds. This is interpreted on the watch and it will tell you if you have atrial fibrillation. This is being validated and is not, these devices are all being approved by the FDA as level two medical devices. So we know that the diagnosis of this is very accurate. Now, the once the information is saved on your watch, it's then transferred to your phone where it's stored as a PDF file and can be transferred, emailed, etc., to your healthcare provider. Now, in this example on the right hand side, this is an ECG done of a friend of mine on an Apple Watch, and he does have atrial fibrillation but is on treatment for it, and this ECG shows clearly. He is not in atrial fibrillation. So it's important that you understand that the only purpose of this app is to tell you whether you have atrial fibrillation or not. It doesn't do the past, present, and future that we talked about before. It also does record your pulse rate. So the second condition that we have to talk about is the slowing of your heart. Again, if you reach the age of 60, you'll find that the chances of having a pacemaker insertion to increase the rate of your heart goes up exponentially with age. So the chances of you requiring a pacemaker in your 70s or 80s is quite high. It's a part of your body that just wears out, like your knee or you have cataract surgery or your, uh, you have surgery on your hip or your knee for arthritis. So this is a common problem and one that we have to be careful of. So atrial fibrillation, usually your heart rate speeds up. But in this particular case, your heart rate is very slow. And once you get below 50, then you don't feel very well and can certainly have problems with consciousness, which can lead to disastrous results if you fall or driving an automobile. All right, here is a tip for you. Watches continually monitor your pulse rate. Now this is even so with a $10 watch. You don't need a very expensive smart watch. All watches usually will monitor your pulse rate continuously, not just when you're having symptoms, and it will give you a notification if you're going too fast or too slow. Now in atrial fibrillation, your pulse rate is generally too fast. If you need a cardiac pacemaker, of course your heart is going too slow. So all we need to do is to figure out what's too fast and what's too slow. So we need to monitor your pulse. So what's too fast? Well, it depends really on your activity level and your fitness. So let's say you're 70 years old. You just really are a bit of a couch potato. You don't do a lot of exercise like your doctor says. So maybe your maximum heart rate's around 120. Well, you can easily follow that on your watch and see what, what it usually gets up to. So then you could set your maximum heart rate is maybe 120. Maybe if you go walking and you're out doing a lot more activity, you might go up to 130 or 140. So you could set the maximum heart rate at that level. Now, if you started to get dizzy or you felt your heart palpitating, look down at your watch. It'll probably give you a notification. Say, hey, my heart rate's going at 160 or 150. Now, if you had the ECG app on your watch, then of course you could look at it and it would say if you had atrial fibrillation or not. But you don't have that because you've got a $10 watch. But now if you go to your healthcare provider and say, gee doc, you know, I got a bit of palpitations in my chest and my heart rate went up and wow, it was 150, 160. That is really significant and certainly a help for us physicians trying to figure out what the heck's going wrong, right? Now the same is for the pacemaker. I would set uh, the minimum heart rate is around 50. 
And you know, if you, my heart rate personally, it never goes below 60, so I set mine at 60. So again, with a $10 watch, you can figure out if your pulse is too fast or too slow. So if you don't have a smartwatch and you still are interested in the ECG app, then there is a company called AliveCore. They make a device called Cardia Mobile, which can be purchased at Best Buy for under $90. This device has an app with it and it goes on your cell phone. The device is small and can fit on your key ring and can diagnose atrial fibrillation. It is FDA approved. It does store the ECG on your, uh, on your phone and could be emailed to your healthcare provider. Your heart and your watch. Please remember the like and subscribe. Till we meet again, Ron Brown with Tech for Seniors.